Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. So for my IOP, I discussed the book about of the stranger. Now, initially, when we first finished the novel, there was a lot of discussion of primarily about the idea that Mersault was completely void of emotion, that he had no feeling whatsoever until it appeared at the very end of the novel. Now, it became so abundantly clear that people disliked Mersault that he was a very insensitive person, almost subhuman, I heard he was called. And to me, I despise the fact that anybody could be considered less than a normal human. So naturally, my purpose was to find out, to prove that theory completely false. So in order to find that, I found copious amounts of color. Now, I had no idea what this meant, but in the entire novel, I found 82 pieces of color illusionary words in a 110-page novel, 82 words that had to be there for a certain manner. And I figured, you know what? Let's find every single piece of color in it and write it down. So that's what I did. This is every piece of color in part one, from the very beginning up until Mersault shoots the arrow. Now, the first part I saw was the diversity of color. Not only were there blacks and whites, very neutral, very plain, there were also vibrant pinks, vibrant greens, vibrant purples that only appeared in that part. They didn't repeat unlike the blues or the reds or the blacks. So they had to mean something more, I figured. Um, so what the pink stood for, I saw on page 26, was a pink plaster angel the green right here stood for the sky was green on page 26 as well. And then the purple ink, page 32. Now, the amount of color, and I counted 60 words in part one of color in about 60 pages. That's an insane amount of color, and it had to be a certain purpose that Camus would incorporate that much of specific color instead of allowing the reader to say, you know what, the sky, I'm going to say it's blue. No, the sky is green. It's green for a purpose. Now I did the same for part two. Difference, a disturbing lack of color, also of variety and diversity of color. There are no the vibrant pinks, the vibrant purples, the vibrant greens. Very, very bland blues and whites and grays and blacks. Now, this, I figured, had to correlate into the changes in the plot of uh, the, the Stranger. Because in part one, it was very day-to-day -day life. He expressed himself how he would normally do. But in the second part, he was confined to the, to the environment that everybody else was putting him under in jail, in prison, in the courtroom. Now, you could say that since it's a jail, it has a lack of color because they're supposed to be bland. But also, why would Camus specifically put down the reds in the courtroom? Why did he specifically have all this color out in the normal world when you have this disturbing lack of color in the secondary portion? And just so that you can see it better, it's quite abundantly clear that there is a large majority of color in part one versus part two. And that represents the changes in the environment of Mersault from his normal house into prison. The lifestyle, instead of doing smoking cigars and drinking and doing whatever he pleased having his job in part one, he instead was just sitting around in prison in the courtroom in part two. Now, what could color mean? What did this mean, just because there was color? I found this quotation on page 26. The sky was green. I felt good. Now, that's a direct connection to color and emotion from her salt. 
Since he saw the color green, he felt good. So because of that, if one piece of color had emotion tied into it, then that meant another piece of color had to tie into it naturally, because there is no purpose for Camus to just do this once, if not to keep repeating that pattern over and over again. Now, I found this quite interesting because this was in part one, at the very beginning of the book, when most people said that he was completely devoid of emotion and character. Nowhere near the priest at the end where he explodes in a vibrant passion of emotion, or so-called emotion, as I found out. I found another quotation, also towards the beginning. I wanted her so bad when I saw her in that pretty red and white striped dress and leather sandals. Now, not only is there a direct link to seeing the red and white dress and the expression that, she, that he wants to sexually have Marie, but also, out of everything that's in the environment, the trees, the bikers, the people coming out of the theater at that point in time, he sees the dress. He picks out that little detail and specifically notes it down. That sense of detail is something that only a human can possess. That you see something and you pinpoint it and you take it out. Now, while I was trying to figure out what this, all this color meant, I stumbled across Dr. Max Lucia, who, he had the theory that color was objective and shared by all and color equals mood equals personality. Each color, when viewed by the human eye, presents a certain color feeling, a certain emotion that you've received. And that is what the test I have prepared for you now is. So on the next slide, I'm going to show you a color. And this is for question one. I'd like you to hit two of the feelings that you have. A very blue. So, now that I have collected the results, it seems like a lot of you have the exact same answers. For the blue, I see at least 12 people clicked tranquility and calm. Interesting. Gray, non-involvement and concealment. That seems to be the same answer. Purple, I see wishful and charming for at least 10 people of the same. And then for red, I have sexuality and violence. Sort of interesting that a group of classmates can all look at the same color and have the same feeling, the same sort of emotion of humanity. And I found this quote from Confucius that everything has beauty, but not everyone sees it. Everything has purpose. Everything has detail, but not everybody can see it.
So this is what Dr. Max Lucher found, that every color has a specific feeling tied to it. Blue, tranquility, calm. Green is very uplifting, happy, passive, self-esteem. You feel good, like the quote before. Red, violence, action, sexuality, and so on and so forth. A lot of the answers that you put down. Now, with this intense detail, I found a specific passage which contained three words of color, including the purple from part one. Then from a drawer in his night table, he took out a sheet of paper, a yellow envelope, a small red pen box, and a square bottle with purple ink inside of it. Page 32. Now, if you connect the meanings of the Dr. Max Lucia's color scale to the colors in here, yellow, active, aspiring. So yellow envelope when he's writing the letter for Raymond to Marie, he's hoping that it will convey the message that he wants. Red, for the violence, for the hatred of the woman who wronged Raymond. And purple, which is wishing that everything will be right. All of that color connects into the emotion that Mattel feels. Now, there was a stark character change within part one and part two, and I think everybody could see that, with the transformation of having daily life into prison. This was when he was in prison, right near the end, when he was judged. But all the long speeches, all the interminable days and hours that people had spent talking about my soul had left me with an impression of a colorless, swirling river that was making me dizzy. Having no color whatsoever. But because other people were telling him how to live. That you don't have a soul. That you don't have emotion. He was becoming part of them. He was seeing what they saw, becoming completely colorless. Now, again, we have this picture of the comparison between the color. In part one, lots of color, lived his life, had emotion. Second, when he was supposed to have emotion towards the end, if we relate color to emotion, he didn't have very much. Whereas really, what most people thought was exactly the opposite if you related to color. In the part two, you see dark, blackness, nothing. When he finally explodes, you don't see any color in there. You have the last yellow, which signifies the aspiring wish to be able to live his life again. In conclusion, with Ms. Mersault's detail-oriented nature, particularly in color, it presents him to act as an individual with an unpredicted amount of humanity and emotion. From Albert Einstein, he says that the creative, sentient individual, the personality, creates the noble and the sublime. Not the state, not the, dull, the herd, as such, who remains in the dull in thought and dull in feeling. Everybody telling Mersault what to think what to say, how to feel in the courtroom after he killed the man. But because he is an individual and he finds the detail and the passion and the emotion and the color within the world, I would actually say that he is more than human, that he possesses an abnormal sense of emotion, too much so that others believe that he is 